What's the difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook group? I get this question several times a week, maybe even once a day. And so I wanted to shoot this quick video to explain the difference and more importantly, how you can use these differences to help you achieve your goals, which is getting more clients. So what's the difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook group? Well, it might be helpful to start with thinking about um, customer relationships to you, customer and client relationship to you. So I want you to imagine three circles. Right in the center of the circle, let's call it the bullseye, let's say that that is your paying clients and customers. So the people are like most highly invested with you. Those are the ones that have actually paid you money. Now, if you imagine another circle around that, those are people who haven't paid you money yet, but they're already some way connected to you. They know, like, and trust you. Perhaps they've already given you their email address or they're following you. They're, they're in your pool of potential audiences. They know about you. But they just haven't crossed the line to paying you yet. And then let's imagine a final circle, which is right around that, which is people who um, haven't taken that step and maybe don't know, like, or trust you yet, but they fit in, in your potential audience. They're people that ultimately could become paying clients eventually. Keep that in mind because it's going to help you not just in this video but in other videos i do so that you can make sure that you're putting the right message in front of the right person at the right time so the name of the game is really for everybody is to make this inner circle the circle of paying clients and customers you want to make that bigger and so how you do that is by focusing on the circles outside of it and this is where it comes back to a facebook page and a facebook group a Facebook group is made up of people who have or expressed an interest. They've requested to join your group. And so by that definition, they've already put themselves like one step closer in the circle. Whereas a Facebook page is available to anyone and pretty much anybody could type in your name and come to your Facebook page. So it's not a case of which one is the best one. It's a case of which one is the best one to do the job. And so for that reason, how I use those two different pages is I use my Facebook page is my shop window. And I do, do put content on there just so people can see me. They can learn a bit about me. But I use my Facebook group to share more in-depth co content. And that's where I'll actually make offers inside of my group in, to invite people to join my paying programs. And that's where I'll add in more in-depth content to help move people from that initial interest into my paying programs. I did another video on this, on distinguishing between free and paid content, and I'll add a link to that so you can check that you can check that out if you want to, where I talk about the difference between the content to get people to raise their hands and the content that turns that raised hand into paying business. So that's the first thing that you need to know. It's like that you, you can use them differently depending on your objectives. But there's some other real advantages to having a Facebook group. I've got to confess, for a long time, I did not have a Facebook group. My thoughts when people were saying to me is like, you've got to have a Facebook group was like, really? Do I really need one more thing to think about? Um, I've already got an email list. Why would I have a Facebook group? Because what I thought was, I'm going to have to be in there and be the cheerleader. I'm going to have to be putting in lots of content and keeping conversations going. And that doesn't really fit with my personal style to be doing that daily. So I, I didn't want to do it. This is what changed it for me. My focus was on my Facebook page and my Facebook page now has about 35,000 followers. Now that may sound impressive. You think, woo, Bernadette, what a massive audience. You must simply need to post on your page and magically have floods of people sign up for whatever you're offering. Yeah, in theory, but in reality, it doesn't work like that because here's the thing. Facebook changed their algorithm. So now when I post something to my business page, that post is doing well if it reaches 1% of my audience. We can talk about how you can increase engagement. That is the subject for another video because right now I'm just drawing the distinction between Facebook pages and Facebook groups. And especially if you want to get clients quickly, this is why you need to know this. So on my Facebook page, only 1% of my audience might see it. When I started my Facebook group and I started putting content into my group, typically 40% of my group were seeing the contents. So just think about that for a moment. If I posted something on my Facebook page, that would mean that um, out of an audience of 35,000, only 350 people would see it, only 1%. If I had an audience of 1,000 people and 40% of them were seeing the post, that would mean an audience of 1,000 people um, 400 of them would see that post. So just think about this for a moment. This is what I love about uh, Facebook groups. 
This means that Facebook groups are a great leveler. So if you take the time to assemble your Facebook group, and I have clients who are growing their Facebook group to a thousand in in like in maybe three months, right? So it doesn't have to take long. That Facebook group has the same reach and has as many people seeing your posts and your content as a page that would have 35,000 or 40,000 people on it. So which would you rather do? Do you wanna go and figure out how to get 35,000 fans on your Facebook page? Or would you rather grow a group over the next couple of months with a thousand people in it, but know that those thousand people are invested, interested, 40% of them are gonna see your posts and your offers when you go live. You know, I like to take the, the smart route to get the things done. And that's why you need a Facebook group. So I'm not saying don't have a Facebook page, they it, they still matter because in online, if someone wants to check you out, let's say they discover you um, because someone else has recommended you or they, they, they come across your name and they wanna check you out, they are gonna check out your Facebook page. So you do wanna make sure that you're posting content there regularly just to show that you're committed, that you're serious. You wanna put your content out there uh, on a regular basis. But if you are really looking to nurture relationships with potential buyers, and move people from that outer circle of like, I'm curious, I'm interested, to, oh, I'm fully invested, here's my credit card, I'm signing up. Your Facebook group is a, a fantastic place to do that. Now, the other great thing about a Facebook group is you get to set the tone. You, you can decide who comes in, who's come out, who goes out. It's your group, so you get to control it. So even though I still think you should also have your email list, you should have your own way of connecting with clients and customers because Facebook ultimately owns your Facebook group. You don't, you're just the leader of it. It just makes amazing sense to have a Facebook group. But, uh, Facebook groups, I've gone from someone who never used to you know, use them, didn't want them, to not only is it something that I use in my business, but it's like a number one strategy I give to my clients. And I implore you, if like you've ruled out having a Facebook group, um, I really encourage you to start re-question that decision because in terms of having an amazing place to nurture potential buyers and turn them into and turn them into real paying buyers it's a fantastic tool to use now it would be remiss if i covered all of this and didn't also give a little mention to your facebook profile this is your personal page where typically you might set, share pictures of your cat or your dog or whatever or your babies and how does that fit in well you still want to have a personal profile too because one of the ways that you can connect with potential clients and customers on Facebook is by joining groups where your ideal clients are hanging out. And although some group moderators will let you join as a page, typically they prefer people to be joining because let's face it, they want their group to be made up of real people who are making real connections. So when you join a group, you will be um, participating in that group under your personal profile. So again, just think about this. This means if you go and join a conversation, and share something incredibly insightful. That's a strategy that I've taught in another video. Again, I'll add a link to that below. Um, if you go and do something incredibly insightful, what is gonna happen? Someone who's gonna see your message, uh, someone who's in your target audience will see that message. They're gonna click through to your name on your profile. So your profile has a part to play as well. When they land on your profile, and here's a quick test. If I came to your profile today, would it immediately sing to me who you help and how you help them? Would I immediately be able to see from your personal profile um, what you're doing in business? And many of my clients resist this because they're like, you know what, my personal profile is the place where you know I connect with my old school friends or the people I went to university with. Listen, I totally get that. But you know, it would be remiss if you weren't also recognizing that potential clients are gonna check you out on your personal profile. So. They are going to do that. And even if you don't want to use it as a place for business, you could focus on your Facebook page and your Facebook groups to do that. You still have to have something that just represents you well. So think about it like if you were um, an estate agent, if you're in the real estate business and you were going around town, going around your community, in going around your community, you'd be bumping into potential client, clients and customers. You wouldn't necessarily be pitching them there and then, but you know they're going to bump into you and they're going to form a pressure about who you are as a business person based on how they see you showing up in the community. Same is true with your Facebook profile. So the question is, what's the difference between a Facebook group and a Facebook page? And you might be thinking, well, what do I need and how do I decide what to put where? So my answer to that is you need both but you're gonna put different types of content out on them. And so on your Facebook page, you wanna be putting the content that 
talks about your expertise and gets people interest and encourages them to step towards you. And then in your Facebook group, you want to have more premium content, reward them for the fact that they've made that micro commitment and stepped into your group. But also bear in mind that that's your opportunity to turn that interest into paying clients and customers. So that's how you make the distinction. I hope this has helped. Got any questions about this? Leave a comment below. Um, I do look at your comments. I'll respond. And um, who knows, if you ask me a question, I may just cover it in a future video. Okay, have a great day. Take care.